And here we have him, <laughs> David Alla. How are you, mate? Very well. Thanks for having me. And David, we also to see you. Great to see you, mate. Have Vince here joining us today. Yes. We're, we're, where are we? Tell us who we're we are. We're here at the beautiful uh, Hyatt Regency Hotel in Perth, Western Australia. and God's country. That's where this young man still, uh, well, still lives. When I say still lives. Yeah, I'm back you home. lived a few years in Victoria, but now you're back home. I did, yeah. So nine, what was it, nine years? Nine, ten years in, in Vic, and then, um, yeah, been back here now for five, six years. So all right, five tell floors. us. How, how did it all start, right? So tell us how you got drafted. What happened? Like, well, what did we, how does yeah. that process go? You know, like. Mm. Yeah, it's, um, so I'm a Swan Districts kid, so uh, played footy out there. Um, you go through all your state footy, obviously, yeah. um, representative footy, uh, which I was fortunate enough to do. And then, yeah, come down to that sort of, that draft time where you meet with a few clubs. Carlton wasn't one that I I met with originally. Yeah. Um, it was actually funny because um, they wanted to come over and meet with us just before the draft. Um, and I was working as a roof carpenter. And I just pretty nice. much said I, I couldn't, I couldn't Roof leave. carpenter, that's yeah. a in, tough in job. In summer, <laughs> so it was good. And I pretty much said to him, I can't come off the tools to meet with you guys, so you're going to have to come out to, to meet, with, with, meet with me. <laughs> if you want me, you're going to yeah, have to come and see it was, me. Um, it was strange. So what we did, we teed up a, uh, a meeting at McDonald's around the corner from <laughs> where right? I was site. I walked off site for, for 20 minutes. Yep. Um, met with Who Shane, was it? Shane Rogers. Shane Rogers, he was our um, recruiting um, manager at the time. Yep, I was dirty as and, and just jumped and sort of said yeah, and we sort of met there and um, yeah missed out on the draft and then so what year what, is this that was 2007 Seven? Seven, yeah. eight, um, was our first season at the club so yeah and then missed out on the draft and then was taken a couple of weeks later I think it was back then in the rookie draft in the rookie draft as yeah um, as a rookie in pick 38 or something so it was the last pick for that year so wow. when they when they like uh, and then so they come up and they go all right are they saying, oh, we'll see how we go, depends on who's left, or how, how does that work? Or did they like, promise what, what, How sure or how unsure were you that they're getting picked up? Or? Oh, there's no guarantees. Yeah. No, no. It's, um, right. you know, I wasn't, ex I, I sort of had hopes that I'd get drafted yeah. in the draft. Um, so I was a slightly, a little bit disappointed. Um, I was actually at Alex Rance's house. Um, oh, so we had both wow. our families together um, a fair on, <laughs> on draft day. So. Um, yeah, yeah, obviously very, very happy for him because he got he got picked oh, up. So in the he draft, got picked that year, and I missed. I what missed. did he get picked up? Like, well, I used to, he was around two draft pick, I think. So ah. yeah, he, oh, he was, he was nice right and up there. Yeah. Yeah. Nice, so nice. Um, so yeah, so I didn't get picked that day. Um, so sort of yeah, it was yeah. a roll, bit of a roller coaster that day for us. But um, but yeah, after well, a couple of weeks later, we got the call saying, well, yeah, we're going to we're going to try to get you. In so there. you didn't know nothing up to that, like then from then to when you got picked up. Yeah, there was a couple yeah. of phone calls in between with the club saying that they're going to try to try oh, to grab me in the, so the um, hopes there. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, you still you still hung on to a bit of hope. So yeah. and then um, I was actually at trade school um, at TAFE and I was in my class and that's when I got the phone call from the club to say, we've just taken wow. you at 38. So I pretty much threw my books down, wow. walked out and said, <laughs> see you <us> later. <laughs> I'm coming, I'm I'm coming back. <laughs> Stuff <laughs> this um, uh, studying business. Yeah, so that was That would have uh, been an exciting, exciting uh, moment for you. Yeah, it was. Um, so I was yeah, I was in uh, in class with one of my really close mates as well. So I yep. we took off and, um, and snuck a drink in. And, You'd have um, only been, what, 18, 18 years 18, old? 18, yeah. yeah. Yep, so. Um, and then, yeah, obviously the, the phone call started coming with uh, with the parents and, and everything like that, which yep. was um, yeah, really exciting for them. Nah, you know, that's um, amazing. Which is what it's about. Yeah, so it's, um, it's, I'm not too sure how it all happens now, but that's uh, that's how it was back, so back can then. So can I ask you, before we start talking about your, your first game and all that, mm. in the lead up to that, what what do you have to organise? Did, you get to, did the club help you with accommodation and uh, yeah. employment yep. or... Um, yeah, yeah what, so what, did that, what, what did you have to did they get your uh, place so you could spend your time? <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, uh, so pretty much yeah, as soon as we the, the call come through, because it was a bit later being a rookie draft, I only had um, a week and then I was wow. on the flight um, and did training all the way up till Christmas. Right. Um, and then pretty much moved all my stuff over um, over Christmas. Um, Who'd you stay with? 
so initially I started. I lived with Paulie Bauer and Scotty Gumbleton, who was um, he was at, he was at Essendon at the time. Scott Gumbleton. So, that was, um, so you actually shared with an opposition. Yeah. Player. So they were two mates, and yeah. uh, well, Paul and um, and Scott were good mates. Growing Paul up, Bauer. Yes, the, we remember you know, him yeah. Yeah. from the uh, the Peel area, uh, yeah. Mandra area. So yeah, 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 they were both already there, and then they had a spare room, and because Paul was uh, Bowers was. He's a tight ass. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't want to pay extra rent, so he, he leased out every single room. He would have leased out his couch. Yeah, she made <laughs> profit on that. Yeah, 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 he didn't, <laughs> didn't miss. Didn't miss, so um, he'd break everything down to the fucking the last, the last cent um, in that house. So, um, so I lived there for probably the first half of my year, and then um, where was that? What part of Melbourne? That was in Avondale Heights. Avondale Heights. Yeah, around right that. Yeah, around right about where and, I live. Um, yeah, that's it. Uh, yeah, that was an experience, and that was great. I, I didn't want to go in. There was options to go in with a host family, and yeah. um, for me, I was living by myself uh, yeah. with my sister um, over here, so I wasn't really keen to go into that space. But yeah. um, Rod Ashman, um, through my first probably year and year and a half, he was uh, in player he was welfare. The player welfare, so yeah. he looked after us really well. Um, looked yeah. after our parents when they come over, and, and vice versa. It's something the club did really well. Um, Quality then, person, Rod Ashman. Yeah, great man. Yeah. And, um, and and yeah, and then we sort of eventually I moved in, and um, after a year, we got a little apartment in Brunswick West, and. Yeah. Next door, next door to us was Aaron Joseph and Darren oh, Pfeiffer, and oh, so right. we had our apartment, their apartment. Yes, um, that's some good, good times. So, yeah, years. yeah, it was good. It was, yeah, it was good fun. Um, Aaron Joseph and my partner moved over, so yeah, we sort of. So, so forward. Scarlett, your now wife, now wife, then yes. girlfriend, already yes. at that age. Girlfriend at that age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, she moved over probably about a year after I moved over. Okay. So um, she was your girlfriend before you came to Carlton. Was yeah, so as soon as done the whole journey with us, fantastic, which is, um, yeah, pretty special. So, um, and now, yeah, of course, you're married with a couple of now, kids, yeah, we're uh, we've got a beautiful two daughters, and um, yeah, life's good, fantastic. Any mm. chance of uh, father daughter, yeah, well, once <laughs> they, they both they're both into it, starting to get into it, which is great. One that's plays Auskick now, which is um, that's good. which is good, but uh, and they're starting to they've both got their Carl, first Carlton Guernseys, and that's good. I took them to the their first game, which was uh, Carlton Frio, and uh, ah, nice. it was the first time I seen the my oldest um, yeah. really tune in and, and sort of get into it. Yeah, so Cripper's Cripper's the Cripper's the man of the house. Cripper's the man. Cripper yeah. and Charlie. He's the man. Uh, yeah, Charlie's the big one there. They're, they're the two, uh, king of the they're, kids, they're, Charlie. They're, yeah. yeah, they're the two that um, my oldest are, are all over. Well. If it's good enough for Andrew McKay to uh, have his daughter Abby playing for yeah. Carlton oh, women's so. team, so why not? We yeah, look forward I'll, to seeing the, I think it's the Allard that, girls uh, come yeah. through the, come nah, through the ranks. Good. Yeah, it's great that there's, um, there's those options now. And, 100%. And see how they go. So you come over, what was it, 07 you said? At the end of 07. Oh, end of 07. 07. 07. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, wait, all right, so tell me, you, you walk in, mm. who are the stars that you see? That you, who did you follow, first of all? Oh, as a kid who Yeah, as a kid. I was a kid. Pretty bad Collingwood supporter. Jeez, all Collingwood what is it about these Collingwood supporters? Yeah. Yeah. I, so I had curtains, I had blankets, I had really? everything. Was I was one eye. Oh, so when so, so you probably hated the. But fact then, that but what happens after? That was up until when I was about twelve. Oh, I don't know, twelve, and then you start playing footy, and you start. You know, I used to love going and watching. You know, watching Juddy play. Of yeah, course, Benny yeah. Plays, yeah. James all right, so you walk in and you see who are these stars that you've kind of been watching in yeah. recent years. Yeah, well, the big one, obviously, the two were was um, Chris's first year as well, coming from West yeah. Coast. Over. So you so, came over when Chris Judd yeah. came to Carlton, so that would have been a big thrill, yeah, knowing so, that he was coming across. Yeah, that was probably the big one, obviously, for a kid in yeah. WA. Yeah. Um, he was he was God over here, you know, for, for a lot of kids watching footy and, and that yeah. sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, that used to follow it, so that was big, and then obviously Fev um, was uh, oh, was the big, Yeah, oh. it was the Brendan Favola. the big man. The, yeah, in the you get along well with Fev. Yeah, I, I, you know, I think um, yeah, a little, yeah, a lot of time for Fev. Um, I think he's a, an amazingly generous um, yeah. and a beautiful. Yeah, he's a he's got a good heart. Yeah, yeah, um, and he's also. No doubt about that. He's yeah. also a boys' boy. Isn't yeah, he? So he's yeah, a bit oh, of a, yeah, yeah. Back here, like, yeah. Obviously, liked a good time. <laughs> um, there's no doubt about I that. I think that's but, why we uh, liked him too, man. He was just that. He was yeah, a great but he's just that. Yeah, he, you know, he's yeah. You know, any full, any forward, that's good. 
has that aura, yeah, yeah, that's aura true, that's around true. them, you know, that's that's sort of, um, they're, they're the, the big goals. guys. And they're, and, um, so when you yeah. do that first training, you know, mm. or, you know, you go out there and there's these players around, you always imagine like, yeah. hey, do, you, do you feel like, what am I doing yeah. here? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, as a kid coming in, it was, um, yeah, really intimidating. Um, yeah. You sort of kick that first one, if it doesn't spin right <laughs> off your boot, and it drops a bit short, and you get someone like bloody Brett Thornton or something on the end of it, doesn't even bend down, just kicks it into the stands, <laughs> sorry, throws sorry. his hands up, and you know, it's sort of, um, but yeah, you sort of, you, you, you work your way in, and um, I think for me, the, the way I sort of went about it was just, yeah, head down, bum up, and just you know, work, you have your, to. work your ass off, and then, um, how many sort of games did you play reserves level before you finally got your first opportunity at senior level? Oh, my first, I was actually reasonably fortunate that um, I played a bit my first year through the NAB Cup series yep. um, and went okay. And then being a rookie, you had to wait yeah, of course. Um, until there's a long term injury or, or something like that. So I think it was around, oh, don't quote me here, but around seven or eight, maybe. Yeah, got, I think it was I about May. My, yeah, mm. got my first chance. And, um, it was about May. Yeah, and that, that was again? that was over here. Um, so it was a, it was a big game. It was West Coast. So again, it was Chris's first game back here. Yeah. Um, Chris Judd's first game against West Coast, who yeah. he played for and captain to a the premiership premier, yeah. and all that. So yeah, it was a pretty big, big event, big build up. So. Yeah. Took thought, second um, fiddle, of course, to the oh, debut oh, of Dave Rowland. Debut. <laughs> I mean, we walked off the planes and all the cameras were there. I got pretty excited. But, uh, <laughs> they, thought, they let me walk straight through. They didn't stop me. That's it. So, um, but yeah, no, it was uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a really obviously for, for any kid um, yeah. or anyone. It's a, it was a really special day and a special build up. And it was great that I could do it here. Family, all yeah, yeah they would have been. Yeah, yeah we. Um, Did you got picked for that stand. game because? to some extent because it was on home soil and they thought, you know, if we're going to play him, let's play him in yeah. Western Australia. Um, Hopefully it brings out I the think, best in you. I think um, I played, I think we played West Coast in two practice matches that pre-season, oh, or right. maybe in the NAB Cup. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we played them in Alice Springs, or I forget where we played them, but yeah. I remember playing West Coast um, early on and that was probably one of my better games. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if it was matchups and, and that. Right. I tended to play on Matty Prigis or someone like that when I'd come over, so. Right. Um, they were a pretty strong team. I mean, they'd played in grand finals in 05, 06. Yeah. I think they just they were sort petered of out of the finals in 07 because Juddy had his groin problem, if you remember, before he came over. Yeah, no, they were definitely... Uh, they um, were on the wane yeah. a little bit. I think Ben Cousins' trouble started to... That was all, yeah. They were starting to, uh, starting to come back a little bit, losing a few of their older players. Yeah. And older players um, were sort of, yeah, injured at, at the time. Um, so, yeah, they were... They were right for the pick for us um, and who'd you play yeah, on? Uh, I remember playing a lot forward that day um, yeah, and on a wing you. so and, and you I kicked remember the goal, going you kicked I, the I goal got, in your first game did you? you kicked the oh, goal in your first game? I did yes was it yeah. your first kick? No, I, I, it was. I think it might have been my second, but I only had four for the day. So <laughs> it wasn't. Uh, it was one of the four. Only anyway. one of the four. That's yeah. It. You so remember each hence, one of those four kicks, hence, I suppose. Yeah. Hence the reason. Who I probably played, played on the week. Uh, Dave, I had to play. Dave 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 was a, so a legendary player for West Defensive, guys. defensive yeah. forward that day, trying right. to stop him, but um, yeah. Just, How'd you find it? Oh, it was. Uh, yeah, it was a whirlwind. To be honest, I. There's a lot of games I, I can't remember. Oh, remember. Yeah. Yeah. Parts of it was just a, uh, a blur a little bit. So I was. But we won that I, game. I remember yeah. we won it. Yeah, yeah, we won it quite, quite yeah. well. It was, um, yeah, everything went to plan. And um, yeah, we got the four points. And, yeah. Um, Chris got, you know, the, the How last How much more one. faster is it? Oh, it's quick. Yeah. It's quicker? Like, did you quick. really notice, like, from playing reserves up to the next, the next level? Yeah. Is it like that much you go, whoa, what's going on? It's just the. The room for error is so small. Yeah. If there, you fumble slightly, there's no real second right opportunity. Like, yeah. Yeah, 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 the ball's gone mm -hmm. and it's down the other end, like, like that. So yeah. that's what I remember, especially on the Subi Oval, which was a, a big oval, which yeah, I was yeah, obviously right. familiar yeah. with. Um, but the, the ball speed and that sort of stuff was was quick. And it was just, yeah, as soon as you have a slight little fumble at a stoppage or something like that, there was no, there's no second yeah. opportunity. Yeah. So, um, How did it feel when you kicked your first goal and all the players come and... Yeah, it was good. Gave you a bit great, great uh, feeling. You know, ruffled your hair. You yeah. never had more people ruffled your hair in all your life. That's it. Yeah, no, it was um, obviously a, a special one. So I was pretty grateful. It was probably yeah one of my four kicks. That I, went was, I was right behind that kick. I was in the <laughs> oh, stand yeah. right behind it. Yeah. yeah, it was so. it. 
It was at the left hand end as you're looking. If you're watching TV, it was at the left hand side. Oh, okay, end, yeah. And we were, we were all seated behind the goals that particular night. So yeah. I remember your goal quite well. It was yeah. pretty close to the. Yeah, I think you yeah, kicked it pretty close to the. Um, the man mark. No, no, no. The. Um, yeah, how, how far out? It wasn't very far out. At if the you time ask me, it was probably 60. <laughs> no, it was yeah, probably 40, 40 metres out, yeah, pretty in, like in front. So no, but it was good. Yeah, really good. So it was, um, yeah, it was good to have some sort of uh, impact on the game. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, so now, like happens to a lot of young players, uh, you didn't play any more games that year. So that was it. That was the only one. That was it. I had one. Um, yeah, it was a. So they gave a you a real taste. high. Yeah, a real high sort. of um, of that, and then for the. Rest of the so season. then they said, "Well done, you kicked the goal. Yeah. You're out. <laughs> You're so, out of the um, team." So I pretty much come in for Richard Hadley back then. So Richard, oh, right. he got, he got injured. Yeah. Um, he played and then uh, I, cricket for you New Zealand. <laughs> 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 yeah. Good one, <laughs> Rocco. You would um, say that being I've the cricket twice, man that you are. Twice on my show, so yeah. <laughs> I'm getting the most I can. Yes, out. not that Richard <laughs> Hadley, not Sir Richard Hadley. This was. Richard Hadley, ex ex Brisbane player. Mm. But, um, so yeah, so he he was injured for a, he had a week off, and then so he yeah. come back in the side, and I, yeah. I dropped out, and then yeah. Um, yeah, it was a long time between drinks before my uh, my first and second. So actually, so I, I got then? delisted at the end of the year. Did you get delisted uh, at the end of two thousand eight? I did, yeah, yeah. So I got told that. Uh, Can I delist you after one year? Oh, I didn't think they could, but they. Like, oh, because you're a rookie. Because you're a rookie. Yeah. A rookie yeah. So if you had been drafted as part yep. of the normal national draft, you get draft, two years. Yep. You get two years minimum. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So I was, um, yeah, obviously pretty devastated that you know, I've only been left right. one year and yeah. whatever. But I got told that I could train on. Um, right. So yeah, I just went to work at the end of the, the end of the season and. Um, yep. and no and, guarantee and, you're going to get picked up. Nah, no guarantee. So I can train on, and if um, pretty much if there was someone better out there, they you know they grabbed and they were going to do it. And, yep. um but come back um, pretty fit uh, in, the, in that pre-season and, and trained well for the first couple of weeks, which is then they um, yep. yeah, obviously signed me back up to be a, a rookie again. Yep. Um, I played that whole year of 2009 yep. in the reserves for Northern Blends. And yep. to be honest, one of my most enjoyable seasons of footy that I, that I played. I um, played with a great bunch of guys, um, yeah. David T, this, yeah. um, was coached back then, um, so yeah, and um, performed reasonably strongly um, throughout that whole pretty consistent year for me. Um, and then again, had the same conversations at the end of that year in 2009. Yep. Um, and then 2010, fortunate enough, the same sort of plan happened that I trained on. And so you got um, delisted again. Yeah. Well, that time I think they had to. Uh, oh no, sorry, I didn't get that, not, not, not that year, the year after that I did, because you had yep. to, and then they had to redraft because so I'd spent three yeah. years on the rookie. So, yeah, the next year I, um, yeah, it took me halfway through the season uh, in 2010 to get my next chance, which was again back here. Yeah, um, that's unreal. So, you're yeah. two games, we're both here, like yep. two years apart or yeah. a year and a half apart. Yep, yeah. so both against West Coast and. Um, yeah, and then fortunate after that, I sort of played some consistent footy um, in the back end of 2010, um, which sort of earned the, the contract for yeah, 11. And, uh, so your coach years. then was Brett Rayner? Yeah. yeah. Brett Rayner, yeah, so he played you at the end. How was your relationship with Brett Rayner? Was he? Yeah, so um, oh, I'm just, Rats had his doubts about me as a player. Yeah. Um, a lot of it was around sort of leg speed. Um, so outside. is that the conversation yeah. about like leg speed? So yeah, your deficiencies a, were like leg speed, yeah? Yep, yeah, yeah, well, definitely not the quickest bike going around. Yeah. Um, but it sort of, yeah, I felt that the players had a bit of an influence on that 2010, uh, middle of the season, in 2010 to sort of push my name up to Rats to say, look, the performance that he's doing in the twos week yeah. in, week out is, is what we're after and something we need in our side. Um, and it's funny, I actually had beers with I, um, I went to catch up with Bryce Gibbs and his old man was over and he was having beers with Sticks Kernahan just down at um, in Ascot Vale. Beer with Stephen Kernahan? Yeah. No, that's not possible. <laughs> and that was, this was two weeks before I actually got my gig 
in uh, in 2010, and Sticks was obviously president at the time. Yeah. And, uh, I could even tell you what brand of beer he would have yeah. been drinking. <laughs> yeah, it was brown, yeah. But um, but no, he was a uh, a bit of a he was he liked the way I was going about it and that yeah. side of it. Yeah. And so I was getting in his ear, and then a couple of weeks later, I finally yeah, it all sort of lined up. Yeah, nice. We got good. we got that crack, and um, then that year we played Sydney and Sydney in the final. Yeah. Um, so is that your first final? That was my first. Well, final. it would have been of course. In yeah. The big league, yeah. So the yeah, 2010 like, elimination final. Yeah, Sydney. So that's where. Um, How did that feel like? Again, does the level go up again in these finals? Oh yeah. Yeah. Does it? Yeah. Like I know it does, but yeah. it's amazing that you say that. Like again, it goes up another level. Like yeah, everyone just is it because of the like, especially the, the start. pressure, especially yeah. the, until the game sort of you wear yeah. in the game and, and that side. Is of it, it the intense pressure? It is. Yeah. yeah. I think it's just the, everyone's intensity just lifts that little bit. Um, so which is so everyone's running on adrenaline. Finals. Yeah, especially for that first, no that first quarter. Yeah, it's it's doing it. All well, right. that's it with yeah. elimination yeah. final. There's no next week, is there? Yeah. So yeah, there's obviously a lot on the line and two desperate teams. Yeah, we unfortunately, yeah, just I mean, yeah, we, we played reasonably well, but um, yeah, not good enough. We missed yeah. out by a goal. How'd you play? I wasn't too bad that game, so yeah. um, personally, yeah, it was, yeah, played my role. I, I no, no, because as a player, then Juddy was. Um, that was probably the game where I look back and you just sort of see. Uh, you know, your leader of, of someone like Chris, where he willed himself, and I think it was the yes, third he did. or something like that. third or second. I think it was the third quarter. So that, quarter was his, that was his Brownlow year, 2010. And, um, you sort of, yeah, you sort of well. seen him get to work and and sort of just Mate, try he to lifted take in that yeah. middle there, man. He started getting those clearances and yeah. that, man. Yeah. yeah. So that sort of lifted everyone else, and um, yeah, just but, uh, that was your, your first sign of like what a true champ would like. So heading into 2011, you've just come off. Two elimination final losses, 2009 to Brisbane, where we probably yep. should have won. Yep. We were four or five goals up in that last quarter. And then Bradshaw went berserk. Yeah. Oh, we did and then Sydney, of course, and that was another close game that we could easily have yep. won. We lost it again. So what's the feeling going into 2011? Um, what was the talk around the club? And, and what was the message from the coach about what we need to do in 2011 to go, to go at least... Yeah, I think that then, uh, another step further. Then we found that it, the foundations were there. Yeah. Um, you know, I thought going, you know, you, you leave, you know, the I suppose the, the comments after that elimination final were let's go, you know, enjoy our break, but let's get to work, make sure we don't come back in a in a state yeah. um, where we're happy with ourselves because we feel like that windows the windows coming and the windows here. Uh, so look after ourselves, prepare for obviously a, a big pre season. Um, yeah because yeah, we've obviously got to work on a few things and, um, and lift, I suppose, everyone's performance and, and fitness and, and all that sort of stuff um, slightly. But yeah, there's a lot of confidence going that you know, okay. we've, been, we've been in the mix. Um, yeah, we're interesting. Sort of, it was only a, a kick either way and we'd probably go into mm. another final. Because um, so I guess the message could have been the other way, couldn't it? It could have been like, oh, what a wasted year. We've gone no further than the yeah. previous year. We've got eliminated. I think where the, the club year. was, though, in yeah. terms of, you know, to That's play right. finals and, and yeah. that side of it. So they, it was a positive a outlook. Was, like, the glass was half full here? Yeah, rather well, than you, half empty. you look at the guys, you, you know, that were playing in that side back then, you know, your Carazzo's, um, yeah. Scotto's, yep. Simo, um, you know, Jared Waite. Um, all the guys that have probably been around that club, Andrew Walker, um, that have been around the club for, for a period of time, mm. they've sort of work the, with the club from the bottom all the way to where it is so um, you'd lost Nick Stevens like, by that stage hadn't you yeah um, I think he was only there for about a year after Juddy came and um, it was two years I was reckon that, was that, that I was was that a big loss for, for us in the midfield because he was quite a creative player yeah in his own um, I know he yeah, would have I, been I a bit think, dirty, by the way. I'm not getting the captaincy because Dave brought Juddie yeah, across. I think he was. Uh, I think he had sure. his eyes on the captaincy, Steve O, back then. Because um, oh, Whitnall, when you look had, at, Whitnall you look had been our, delisted by the end of 2007. You look at the draft, and you got number one draft pick Mark Murphy, number one draft pick Bryce, Bryce Gibbs, Gibbs, Cruz, um, Cruz, yeah, Chris, Chris Judd, um, Andrew Carazzo. Yeah. Andrew think, Walker, another one. Yeah. Two. So you, you go through that midfield, and you go, well, you know, where does Nick Stevens sort of fit yeah. into that? Yeah. yeah. Um, of course, oh, his neck know. injuries what yeah. forced him to have to retire. Yeah, so I think, um, yeah, I, I think those guys probably stepped up and, and stepped into that role and probably added something a little bit different. To what, yeah. What yeah. All right. So he was, was a good, he was a beautiful kid. So 2011. Definitely. So in between there, so from 2010 to 11, we lose one coach, 
Is that, is that no, 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 no. That was at the end of 2012. On. Yeah, yeah. 2012. So, so 2011 11 was, was, 11 was, was our best year. Yeah, 11, 11 was a, was oh, a cracker. Actually, 11, yeah, but you, but you didn't make finals in it. Yeah, oh, no, yeah, 11 we, we made finals. We beat Essendon. <laughs> He's having a malfunction here. Oh, 2011, we smashed Essendon in the elimination yeah, we did. finals. Yeah, we did. There must have been a really big resolve to say, Cameron, we can't lose three elimination finals in a row. We've got to knock over Essendon. Yes. Yeah, I think everything sort of lined up. Um, you played in that game. Oh, I did play in that one, yeah. So that was... Um, yeah, that was probably the, the funnest game that I, I've played in, and it was more to do with yeah. three-quarter time, the game was probably over. Oh, so, yeah, it was. You had a quarter. Oh, yeah. um, to enjoy it. sort of really enjoy it. Yeah. And I remember Robbie Warnock was in the ruck, and That's you right. sort of remember going into it, you know, the only time I've ever been into a, a stoppage, yeah. um, you know, centre bounce and that sort of stuff. And, you know, um, just felt like you're yeah. a kid playing junior footy again. In terms of like the, you were relaxed. You were, you were only, what, 22 around. at the time? Yeah, yeah. 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 So... Which um, and is something I wish I did. Yeah, I wish we, wish we probably did a lot more and just sort of yeah. being a lot more relaxed than what we were. But um, yeah, and then we obviously won that, and then we moved, and we come back over here to play West Coast. And um, your happy hunting ground. <laughs> it was, yeah. So, Subiaco Oval yeah. against West Coast. And um, yeah, unfortunately, again, mm. um, the story of we got done by. Three less points, than, less points, than a kick, yeah, and it's probably a, um, I can't a questionable, it. questionable free kick. What do you could reckon have been about that early. Walker? <laughs> well, do you think Andrew Walker was um, <laughs> pushed in the back and I think they manhandled it. in the goal square? Or they not? reviewed it more times. Yeah, not they probably paid that one. <laughs> yeah, they paid that one. And then that was probably you know, that, the to road. be honest. When you look back at it now, that was probably our year because um, we would have gone on to play Geelong. A lot of players say that. Yeah, that we would play Geelong, which would be twice that year. Um, I think our leg speed and that sort of stuff with the, the three amigos. Um, yeah, we had Yaron, yeah. Betts, and um, Garlic, true. Yeah. yeah, down forward, and you know Dennis and, and those pretty guys damaging with their leg speed. I think small forwards. We um, we backed ourselves pretty pretty confidently against Geelong. So who yeah. knows what could happen? But that's all. Um, that's that's what they, they, that's, these things are about. Is reminiscing right, and thinking about what could have been. All right, so now we're going to go back right now. So in 2012, right? right. That's so, the year where that's the, the year. wheels fell off that's a year. bit. That's the which I think the wheels didn't really fall off that year. Injuries, we, a lot of injuries. We had injuries. We still won 11 and 11, but I think Ratz's cards were signed pretty early. That's my opinion, I don't know. But tell me something. How does it feel? Can you feel it within the club that something's happening there? Like, yes. Yeah. with the coach, it, it's not looking good. What was good. the dressing room talk? And did we about? have an inkling that Malthouse was on the cards within the playing group. Oh yeah, definitely. You know, being a, a small, tight knit group that a footy club is, those you know, it doesn't take long until you know um, discussions that may have had that probably you know, playing group is meant to be kept away yeah, from the playing course, group, so sort right. of come down into playing groups and that sort of stuff. So I think um, yeah, it was, it was it was a bit of towards the back end of 2012, a lot of sort of walking around on eggshells sort of feeling. Um, of, of not of so much the playing group, too. but it was more to do with maybe you know the surrounding upstairs and, and yeah. all, well, back then. I don't know what it's like now, but upstairs was all the, the coaching and um, and LG admin and, and whatnot. But um, and then I remember Rats actually moved his office downstairs. Um, should have done then, that a lot earlier. And then to be more around the playing group <laughs> okay. and, and whatnot. So there was a lot so of those type of moves and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> yeah, he used to sometimes go the other way. <laughs> um, but, um, but yeah, I think, you know, I think I probably, you know, I'd, I'd imagine Rats now would have taken a lot of learnings probably about mm. how that was all, like, obviously, the coach years now would be probably completely, not, not completely different, but he would have definitely, definitely changed a lot. Yeah, in terms of, Maybe like the player management and the relationships and, and whatnot, because obviously, mm. when you look at AFL coaches these days, yeah. um, it's all about player relationships, and, yeah. you know, and which is the same in business and, and of the same as everywhere. You know, um, you want your players to feel as comfortable as they can, to perform as well as they can, um, and and freely. Um, you know, and that's what I was sort of mentioned about that Essendon game. It was the first game, and, and for my whole career, I never played a game where I felt comfortable that I'd play the next week, which is something I sort of look back and go, well, Oh really, for I your whole I'd... career you never felt no, comfortable? No, I, knew, I thought I'd get dropped the week after. Didn't matter how well you game. played? Oh, obviously if I played well, but all through that game, it, it, might, it might be, you know, I might not get a touch, maybe two touches in the first quarter. So straight away my mind was starting to go, shit, I've got to do something because right. 
Oh, I'm going to get that, 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 that day. Back then, they had the old red vest and bloody green vest. That's I was just right. Waiting, yeah, waiting yeah. for the runner to come and tap you on the shoulder going, mate, you're off. So you always played with a little bit of fear, or yeah. I did anyway, um, that I'll be back down to um, Northern Bullance the week after, which um, which is, is something that I'm you know, looking at back on and when I talk to young players and that sort of stuff, mm. it's, it's more about like making sure that you know if you're in the side, you're in the side and you're going to be there for four weeks no matter what, just play with freedom kid. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I suppose yep. I sort of, sort of digress a little bit there, but um, no, no. but yeah, it felt a lot more pressure when you went out and played in that 2012 that, you know, there was a lot of added pressure from externally, yep. um, you know, and it become a little bit, I think what crept in was a little bit of self-survival mode for the playing group. Yeah, um, so, self-preservation. Yeah, of so course, you sort of worry yeah. about... All right, as long as I go out and get, you know, 25, 30, you become a lot about possessions instead of what makes a, a great side is just going, you know, it doesn't, that, that, all that stuff doesn't matter. Yeah. Let's just go out and play your role. That's um, how you should do what be. you need to do, and the rest will get taken care of itself. But, um, but it become a lot, a little bit more about that in 2012, I think, and that was mm. probably on the back of some of the, the noise internally of that course. was happening and that sort of stuff. Course, and that's why you... the decision probably got made. And then... Yeah, we obviously knew that Nick was coming out of contract and the club were talking to Nick. It was a lot. I mean, within us, there was a lot of talk. I can imagine yeah. within you guys, you know. Yeah. And then you don't, like, you know, all right, so you had an inkling that Malthouse might be coming, but you don't know what the new coach is thinking. Does he want a player like me? Am I in his thing? So yeah. that's why this self-preservation comes in. Correct. Yeah, yeah so that's, the, that's the, the tricky part. And, you know, so it's something that probably was known within the group because the club had been in a situation you know for that for that period where it's been struggling for a long time the players would come in and it'd be more about just making sure that they yep. did what they needed to do to get picked the next week and that sort of stuff so it was a big sort of um something probably the back probably need to push further but cultural drive in terms of like you know just like everyone's coming and play your role uh, yep. it doesn't matter who's getting the touches who's getting the goals and that sort of exactly. stuff which is very basic and it's very sort of but when footy becomes a your life and your livelihood, then you know sometimes those things creep in. So, 100%. Uh, it's human. Where nature. good clubs, good clubs, and successful clubs um, have a strong enough culture that it doesn't. Yeah. So um, that's probably where we were um, in 2012, I reckon. Yeah. And then Malthouse comes in. Yeah. How's Nick that getting? Now you've got like you had rats. Rats, yep. a, a legend of car, yeah. right? And a great coach. Great coach. Right. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. What I'm yeah. saying is a great coach. But now what you're doing is you're getting. I thought, I thought he was a great coach. I thought he should never yeah. left. But um, with Malthouse, now you're getting like a legend of the coaching, like how, like. Yeah, you talk about that um, that aura or, or yeah. whatnot about Favola. Um, well, when Mick walked the door for the first time, um, for me as a Collingwood, well, I was just oh, yeah. at Collingwood, and That's right. um, Mick being so big in the West over here as well, yeah. um, of course, it was shit. He's um, Mick Moldhouse is our coach. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, it's, so were you Sir excited Alex by Ferguson that news? Sort of set up, you know? um, were you um, excited? Were you positive and optimistic when you? When the news came that Mick Malthouse had just been Yeah, I, I don't think you ever know what to expect, to be honest, mate. I, I think, yeah, um, yeah I, I was definitely, you know, obviously the, the greatest coach that our, our game has seen yeah. in terms of, you know, yeah. on paper and whatnot. Yeah. Um, and more his importantly... His record spoke for itself, so I thought, what a, you know, for me, what an opportunity to yeah. say, you know, to, to learn, to be coached under probably, yeah, yeah. arguably the, the greatest coach um, that our game's, you know, one of the time. first things that happened when he came across is that you guys went over to America and did yep. the um, the high yeah, what, the, what do they call it the high altitude yeah. training and all that. Yep. How did you? Was that your first sort of opportunity to to, to, to get some communication going between you and Mick? Yeah. Um, so how was he for you? How did you find him? Oh, look, personally for me, um, yeah, I I, I love Mick. I, I thought he was, you know, for for, for my football, I was. You know, um, someone that Mick would play. Um, yep. You know, because uh, it's he was very much on. You know, you look at your Jared Blairs um, that played for Collingwood. You know, yeah. Not the most gifted players, but someone. If if you know, if you could go to war. Um, yeah. I'm sure Mick you knew the effort about, was going to yeah, be. You know, Blair, he's going to do yeah. it, and he probably seen me as that type of small defensive forward. 
um, that, that played that type of role and was willing to just go out there and do his do his part. Um, yeah. So yeah, I was I was you know for in terms of selfishly um, for me, um, I learned a lot from Mick um, as a person and that that side of it. Um, and for my time in the club, um, he gave me a great opportunity to play um, footy. Unfortunately, at that time, yeah. um, I started having a few injuries with my calves and I missed you know with a um, yeah. a large ankle injury and, and so sort of cut my season short but um, mm. he at least gave me the opportunity to, to play yep. Um, yep. and yeah I think you know was he the, the right fit for the for the footy club in terms of where we were as a group um, yeah. to there oh, I don't know um, you never will know um, no. probably if you look back on it you'd probably say no but well, he still there's, show that there's he a lot of there's a lot of um, there's a lot of other things that come come to that as well, um, but yeah, I think you know I I, I learn a lot as a person um, from Mick. Um, you know, we'd go around his house for dinner, he'd invite you into his into his home. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's obviously um, yeah, and then there was obviously the the fallout that happened again. It was almost like going back in time, 2012, yep. so where it was sort of... You have to it again, so the whole thing, yeah, you feel the same. Yeah, you know, things are happening, yeah, you feel like, you know, um, you know, and Mick would, you know, Mick would go into press conferences, and, you know, you'd, you'd pick a fight with the journal, obviously. Yeah, at the um, end, he was picking fights. <laughs> but a lot yeah. of that was to do with, it would take the shine off the poor performance that us as players yeah. did on the footy field, because um, he knew that that would be the article going forward. Mm grumpy old Mick or whatever. Um, so he did a lot of things like that when you talk to him. You reckon he was, he was taking the hit, was he? I think at times and that sort of stuff. Yeah, like wow, when, you, when you talk to him and that sort of, yeah. the, you sort of break it down, you go, oh yeah, that makes sort of, you know. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, but I think, and then that become, I think, towards the end of it, is it was a bit of a day. Just right? didn't, didn't care, <laughs> like it was, you know. Like, mm. um, so in terms of how they perceived him and, and whatever, his, yeah. his runs are on the board um, and whatever. So. Uh, yeah, there's, you know, you walk into the club, there's cameras out the front. You walk out of the club, there's cameras out the front. So that that sort of got a bit tiring for um, for probably more, not so much me, because I could sneak through and no one sort of stop me. But <laughs> well, it's like Juddy, yeah, and Juddy, and Bert, yeah. all, the, all the senior boys, they'll get you know they'll get questioned and that sort of side of it, and I'll just sneak around the back, no worries. Um, who was um, the who took over as? Interim. Johnny Barker. Barker, that's yeah. right. He, took yeah. he did not too bad, too. Yeah, interim coach. He's did an you, absolute ripper. Did you play in the game where Mick broke the coaching record against Collingwood? I don't think I did play in that one. No. no. So, um, how was the. I mean, I'm interested to know from a player's point of view, leading up to that game, was there much talk um, amongst the boys or was it coming from the coaching staff about the magnitude of that game and what it meant to Mick and all. Was it all about him and was it um, sort of just I don't know communicated it that way all, during that yeah, week? I don't think... Because we didn't play very well that nah, um, We got smashed by I don't think I don't think it was down to all about Mick or anything. Yeah, there was obviously his family and, and stuff, nice presentations <coughs> yeah, and stuff yeah, for him. Yeah. Like, and well, my memory's not that great, but... Um, yeah, the I AFL actually remember. came to Carlton at the start of that, before the... actually. Before the end of the yeah. previous year, they and said, Look, Mick's yeah. due to be, yeah, yeah. you know, on yeah, this yeah. No, round five, who do you want to play? It's smart. Yeah, yeah correct. And it's he said, well, and, We'll do it against Collingwood. Yeah, yeah. Course, it's all that's marketing and, yeah. and whatnot. And, um, you know, at the end five. of the day, anyone that's, t- <laughs> Jesus, it's a, uh, she's a tough industry, and anyone that stays at that level for that many years, 718 games, deserves deserves that whole week to be dedicated to them because that's, yeah, it's. It's it's live and breathe. It's twenty four seven. It's ruthless, and especially you know the impact that coaching had on his family. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know when you talk about you know his wife and that and the, the kids yeah. and that going through school over here yes. and, and that and how much time he spent away from his family. Like yeah. it's a lot of you dedication. Sacrifice a yeah, lot. Yeah. yeah, it does. So and it's um it's not something you go home and mm. you switch off from. Um, I don't. I don't you know, envy any coach, no. man. I'm t- it's like the worst because you take yeah, all have, the brunt. They, you can, know, have, they you can have that role. They deserve to get paid. Yeah, a, it's a hundred percent. So yeah, it's a, it's brutal. Could you feel leading up to the time when Mick got sacked? 
Could you feel that it was building up to that? Oh, yeah. Like, did, did the if players we, know that yeah, this is yeah. over? If we felt it, yeah. Had he lost the players? Do you reckon by that stage? Oh, I know you got hard. along well with him, but yeah, I think it's Do you reckon very the players just said we're not playing for this blog anymore? I don't think any players say they're not playing for the blog. Not um, literally saying it, but, but you know, know what I mean. Like they don't go out on a on a day and go, we're going to give less effort because we want that coach. Because we copped about four or five our, absolute yeah. beltings leading yeah. up. I think, you I think everyone it everyone plays in self preservation. Yeah, yeah. 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 everyone. Yeah. It's more so more that I think everyone goes, well, oh, shit, what's going to happen if he if we're going to lose the the leader of our club? Yeah, where does my spot? Yeah, sort of. You know, yep. where, does, where does where does my spot sit? In the club? Everyone tunes um, into the same radio station, don't yeah. they? WWI FM, which is what's in it for me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Where does this and leave me? The, and that's the that's the where hard does this part leave me? about yeah. turning coaches over so many times, and yeah. um, that's why I, I'm. You know, I hope that now they've got a coach where they just go. You know what? We know what he's something. got yeah. and, and what he's done so far win, lose or draw, whatever the results are, we're going to stick with him for the next 10 years. Well, this is the whole thing. They're going to, to stick with someone, it's easy to say now, we're yeah. doing all right, you know, but when yeah. things start going bad, I, I don't know what they're going to do. Well, we'll it's talk about, hard. let's it's talk about. Hard, you know, it's happened hard with Richmond, you know, like, yeah. he was gone. Um, you know, he was, he he was, I wonder he how they and... turn that around from everyone being in self-preservation mode to all of a sudden doing what the team needs and putting a team first attitude back into the players, because... Unless they've got that approach, they're not going to. Yeah. It's not going to work out well, is it? Yeah, not at all. And I think you know, with um, it probably started in Richmond. I know, you know, talking to um, Alex and listening to a podcast actually the other week. Um, okay. It's you know, Dimmer obviously assessed where he was at as a as a coach and went away and done some own personal development yeah. and come yeah. back. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it was, it was led by. A lot of the, the strong leaders, you know, um, changing the way they in the are. Playing and group. you look at someone like a, a Jack Rewalt, who at the start of his career was yes. all about Jack. Um, yes. Trek Conchin, you know, um, I'd imagine would be. It yep. was a lot about Trek. Yep. Um, and yep. They changed sure their game. Like they changed that. completely. Changed their game. Um, and it Team will become, first out of Yeah, check. and it will become, yeah. you know, a really tight knit playing group. Um, so yeah. That's, it, it happens. It, it can happen, and it shows. Even dusty. It, and it shows it's not, you know, it's not always the coach. Mm. You know, it's not. You know, can't you can't just, just you can't just keep shooting, and taking the head off the, the top. Um, if you still got the underlying issues, which what it is, because the other bloke's going to walk in and just pop the same. Exactly. Exactly. But it's can't easy. Let seven escape, coaches though. in twenty years. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully <laughs> now we'll, we'll see. I think, well, let's um, talk about yeah. it now, right? Yep. You, you watch. You watch uh, footy. You I watch. Do. I'm starting to get. Yeah. <laughs> It's last probably two to three, or oh, three, yeah, two to three years. I've sort of really started to tune into, you know, to, to sit down and watch my Carlton games oh, yeah. um, and watching that. There's only one bloke that I, I you know, I'll, I'll go through that side now, and there's, uh, there's there's two blokes on the list that were there when I was there. You know, Is that right? Yeah. So Ed Kerno be one. Ed Kerno, Paddy Cripps, and Paddy Cripps. Um, yeah. yeah, now that well, that was his um, first best and fairest year. Was your last year? Yeah. 2015. Yeah. Yep. So they're the. He only, was only 20. Yeah. Yeah. So they're the only. They're the only two. So it sort of. It shows how quickly a list turns over. Yeah. So Doherty hadn't started. Oh yeah. Sorry, Sammy Doherty. Sammy Doherty. Oh, yeah. 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 So. He's a good player. Um, oh, he's starting. So Start tell me, you, you're watching the team like this year now. What do you think? What do you think? Where, where are we at? Like. I how know far can still, we go? Yeah. Come on. Let's how go. Far, how far can we go? Can well, we win the premiership? I think the, the comp. The comp. The comp's there. It's I taken. know. Um, it's even, isn't it? Someone, you know, I think, I think we have to finish top four to get a double chance. Yeah. Um, that would be critical. But if we finish top four, uh, and I'm going to get a home final. Finish top four. Um, you get a home final with G. Anything, anything happens oh, from there. I love it. Anything happens from oh, there. And, and I think, especially with the young group, that's, yeah. it just seems like the group's level. Yes. Um, and when you talk about guys playing roles and that sort of stuff, you look through um, that whole, that back line, and it's obviously been pulled apart a little bit of late um, with injuries and whatnot. But to see guys come in and just and they're playing their role, it, they just play their role, and then that's, so that's, that's when you start to go, oh, hang on, we've, something's turned here. Yeah. Um, midfield, you look through that group and you go, well, you know, it's not all about Cripper. It's not all That's about right. Walsh, Walsh and those guys. Yeah. Like they'll have their days when they have them, yeah. but it's more about 
you know, who's, whose turn is it today? If it's not my turn, or like... Kennedy, you know, Hewitt, Yeah, these Chiara, guys are all, all playing through. their role. Um, then you look at the forward line, and I don't think there's a better forward line probably in the yeah. common. I was just going to say, how would you have liked to have played with Harry Mackay and Charlie oh. Kurnow the way they're going? Yeah. Um, yeah, they, they, oh, I always said that, you know, Charlie's probably, would probably be one of the... I always rated him like a Jared Waite type. Yeah. Yeah, but... With a, a bigger work ethic, um, yeah, because yeah. Wade he could have been, he could have been anything, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah. and he was an amazing. That day, he was amazing. And, um, but I think Charlie's got that, yeah, that that, that, that work ethic, that engine, yeah. and, and he's that, wearing the same number. He's got the well, he said <laughs> that. Wade said that. First of all, he's wearing a great number. Second yeah. of all, he sees a lot like of Charlie, yeah. in, well, him into Charlie, whichever way you yeah. want to look at it, and say Charlie just, just let Charlie. I'm sure be Charlie, Charlie. Charlie. Charlie doesn't sit at home and play computer games for. No. <laughs> 10 hours before he runs out in front of 90,000 90, people. Yeah, uh, and then you've got big like, Harry. Yeah. Harry could be one of the, yeah. one of the all-time great forwards if, if, yeah. if everything yeah. goes wrong. One common right. middle already? Yeah, well, I common. think, um, but yeah, I, th I think, you know, that, that forward line and just to see the, even the, the guys and, and I look at, you know, we're talking about the, the 46 jumper, like, you know, Cotter coming in and it just, just plays, plays his role. With that um, you know, it's... It's a brutal spot sometimes. It is where he, where those boys play, which is that high half forward role, and it's bloody unrewarding. And he's been kind um, of like the wing too, so yeah. he, he's got a good he's, running capacity. It's good to see, yeah. It's yeah. good to see someone with a good motor and, and some wheels <laughs> in that in that forty six jumper. Because well, no on, offense another... between myself and Roddy, we didn't <laughs> have too there's much. There's another bloke oh, who came too. in and played in your Guernsey number after you retired. He did pretty well for Carlton. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and he actually, away. yeah. He yeah, had a little Matty bit Wright. Yep. He came over from Adelaide. He won, won our goal kicking with something like go. 27 20, 20 goals, goals or something. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, in one year. He actually did me. So once I, once I um, decided to finish up, yep. uh, come on, that's it. I'll we'll go through that part. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and I, signed, I signed the inside of me locker with like 63 games, blah, blah, yeah. inside, my, inside the locker. Cause by the way, I knew 30, it's 37 goals too, by yeah. the way. <laughs> and so I hope, um, I hope Wrighty puts the 65. I think he got 65, so he just picked me all day. He did. Jumper, he just picked so. you by two. Um, but yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully someone, hopefully Maddie can put his name on the front of the locker. Yeah. And, um, yeah. and 100 also, games, yeah. premiership player. Stick with it, yeah. So, but Look, he's, yeah, he's had a lot of people knock him and want him to be dropped and he's yeah. not good enough and he comes with the butchers territory, the ball jumper. and all that. But yeah. I think, I think, <laughs> you put on the is that what happens? It comes with the 46 jumper. <laughs> you put the jumper on, you know, <laughs> no, you're, you're, not a number, you're not wearing I number think, one and two for a reason. I think <laughs> that might have been the case last year, but... Under Voss, yeah, no, I think he's, he's given him the confidence to yeah to, oh, yeah. to, and to that's do what, what he does best, which is run. He's a great runner. Oh yeah, and I think that's what great we, engine. You know, we we touched on in terms of my career is yeah. not. I never played comfortably yeah. out there each week, so yes. it's amazing. You give someone like um, like Matty all the you know the confidence to go, mate. You, you're in for the rest of the year that's because right. this is what you do. And if as long as it's not about this, not about kicking mm. five and having ten touches. Yeah. If you do this yeah. and this, which yeah. is in your control, then don't even worry about it, mate. Yeah. You, you're there, and yeah. I think, I think you know, you're fine. And that, that freedom. Yeah. yeah. And also, I've exactly. noticed, like, this year that Vossi's kind of like, people like Lockie O'Brien, he's another one that's been the whipping boy, you know, but yeah. he's kind of been given a, a given defined him role. Yeah. He doesn't have to get contested balls. Yeah. His job's not that. Yeah. His job's along the wing, and all of a sudden, they're thriving in their position, you know? Yeah. No, it's, um, look, I, I don't think it's, yeah, oh, it's, it's not rocket science in terms no, of you no. think about what what anyone here um, when you're doing something well, you're either you're, you're confident in it and you're not really overthinking it. It just happens. Exactly. You know? um, and exactly. things happen. So um, all the best games of footy that you know that, that you play personally are the ones that you actually when you're after the game you go, what was I thinking about out there? You go, yeah. oh, I actually don't even know what I was thinking of. It just yeah. everything just sort you're of just, it just popped up and it just, it just happened. So you know, I got the ball. I didn't think about. It. There wasn't one time I thought about, geez, if I miss this kick, what's yeah. going to happen to me next week? It was just grab the ball and just kick the yeah. Um, yeah, it's hard so so it's, yeah, that's that's the big part. And you get a, you know you get 22 blokes feeling that way. Um, it's yeah. and especially well, when you can do when something young, special, yeah. And they're young as what the, the side is at the moment. Yeah. Um, that brings a lot of energy and a, and a lot of freedom and um, brings an exciting brand of footy. Yeah, 100. Now you finished your career at AFL level in 2015. Yes. Um, 
just before we recruited all these guys called Weedering and Charlie Curdo and Harry yeah, McKay and, yeah. and David Cunningham and Jack Silvani. I've seen the right on did the you, wall. Did you, feel, <laughs> did, you feel, did you feel like, oh, geez, I should have kept going because of all this young talent coming uh, through? Or? No, was it your decision I, um, to retire? or Because it was pretty young. Yeah, You're only 26 yeah, or something. Yeah, so I had one-year contracts my whole life besides yeah. once I, I had a two-year. So, um, yeah. And my one-year contracts were not all right, we got to October, or we got to this time of the season and I right. signed for another year. They were always, we'll go to October. Late in and October. then I'll let you know. It depends yeah. on what we pick up. So it Must be nerve-wracking every I was just year. About have, yeah, so I was just about to have my first child. So I signed my last one, and um, yeah. one of the one of the great men of um, supporters and sponsors of the, the footy club, Scott Didier. Yeah. Um, Good man, Scotty. Uh, at, a, at a building company, and I was sort of doing yeah. a little trial, like little startup businesses and, and that sort of stuff. Um, so I ended up just um, chatting him one day, and I said I want to get back into building, and um, yep. and so I started working in his office on every day off. Um, yep. Not in his office, but in the, Is this the in company Melbourne? in Melbourne. Yeah, in Melbourne. office, yeah. yeah. So then I signed the deal, and I, I already was talking to Scotty about the next year, about you know. If, this would be my last year, um, no matter what happens. Right. Um, this will be it. I just need security, and I, I want to sort of work or work straight into to something. Yeah. yeah. So um, building a future because football's never going to. Yeah, correct. So, never going to make you retire. Yeah, is it? that's right. So and Scotty put together a plan where it sort of seen me work full time there, and then move over back over here, starting off or work through the uh, small office here, and um, yep. which has yep. been a, an amazing transition. That's great. Um, but yeah, so Johnny Barker took over. Um, That's right, halfway through 2015. Yeah, Actually, only eight games into 2015. Yeah, and uh, it was it was. Coached three wins out of the last 14 games. Yeah. Were um, you part of any of those? Or were you I injured? I played the last game against Hawthorne, which we definitely didn't win. We got pelted. <laughs> yeah. um, well, that was in their golden era. Yeah. 2015 was the last of their three in a row, wasn't it? Yeah. So, but um, but yeah, I remember going upstairs. And didn't want to. Um, you know, I went up and I just sort of met with Johnny and, and Macker at the time, yeah. Andrew McKay. Yeah. And I said, "Gents, before you shoot me, <laughs> I <I'll> retire. <laughs> <laughs> before you push me over the cliff, I'm about um, to jump myself." So, so I let said, it be Look, known I'm, that I retire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, but they were sort of, you know, we're yeah. probably all on the same page. We had a good yeah. laugh about yeah. it and yeah. uh, whatever. Yeah. But I already had these plans in That's place. Good. Um, to sort of take they should have given it journey. some thought though in advance of that. Yeah. Like you were That's thinking fun. about your future, yeah. weren't you? Yeah. And then um, I was sort Young of weighing up, and then Bolts was Bolts come on board. So okay. I met with Bolts a, a couple of times because okay. there was talk about them wanting me to be like a development coach okay. and um, and play footy in the northern northern, northern blues, yeah. northern blues. Yeah. Um, so play footy there and be a development coach. At, at Carlton. They and, would have loved it um, in the Northern Blues, that's for sure. Yeah, well, Stevie Paper was I've met with yes. him a couple of times. But yeah. Um, but yeah, I spoke to a couple of guys and. Um, Best and know, fairest winner coming back to the club. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'll never you know, forget that night. It was a good night, too. Yeah, that was, was that nine, yeah. 2009. Um, it was. But yeah, I remember talking to even like, um, someone like uh, like Juddy and just about sort of where that goes. and it was a big one about trying to build yourself outside of footy. Um, yeah. So the, the easy option for me was probably to fall back into that development role. But then again, I'd go on one year contracts. So, yeah, yeah, so yeah. Live on the edge a little bit. So I chose to, to go the other way, um, which yeah. I'm I'm grateful for that um, for that choice now. Yep. Um, but yeah, I always joke about Johnny Barr because we always used to do grappling and um, wrestling and whatever. And Johnny always used to raid himself. <laughs> so, so a couple of times he. After a training session, he would grab me from behind and throw me to the ground, and we'd start wrestling. And remember one time, I got him in an armbar, and I leant back too far, and I snapped his snapped his radial in his head. So I said, "So now the running gag is that he, the first chance he got to get me back was to to do this thing." Yeah. So it was all about me breaking his arm. And the I'll tell you one. I'll tell you one thing. And he copped back. a lot. And he copped a lot of criticism towards the end. Of why I don't know because he was a very loyal person. Yeah. yeah. Johnny Barkey, you'd have to say, is one of the nicest blokes you'll ever meet in football. Yeah, he's a great a man. Genuine guy. Yeah, he's a great man. So he's actually working at John's Wing as well now. Um, yeah. Oh, is he? Yeah. Business. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so. It's what uh, he did is the, yeah. new, the new Richard Pratt. And, um, he's employing all of these players, whether they're playing Carl, or not. Or, Carl or Graveyard, time. Like it's the Graveyard. Carl Sticks Graveyard. is there. Bear Gleason. That's right. Stephen um, Kernan's here. Nick Graham. 
Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So, Nick Graham, I remember. Yeah, that. so, um, yeah, no, he's an absolute star of a man. And so you're over here with their Perth office? Yeah, so I look after their Perth office over here. So that's, that's been a, um, yeah, an amazing challenge. And by the way, I think they're the building company that was doing the redevelopment at Carlton too. They did, they did. John Fling Group. Icon Park, yeah, they did the, yeah. uh, the, the first... Well, geez, what's of course, now? they only all... won it on a tender. Yeah, uh, <laughs> no, all, all legit. Oh, I'm sure it's all now? about Paul. Every time I look on uh, online, there's a new building going up, or there's yeah. a stand stand oh, yeah. on. Or... No, it is. It's looking good. It's looking yeah. good. It's all coming together. Yeah. It's looking good. So what's all that? That's going to be the. That's going to be the new yeah. AFLW. Like yeah. the whole ground's yeah. going to be. Uh, yeah. Set up to be the home of AFLW. Right. Plus, there's going to be new training room. Yeah, oh, sorry. Great. Uh, dressing rooms for both the men's and yep. the women's. Yep. I think they may be even going to share the bathrooms or share the toilets yeah. the way things oh, are going. Only a few toilets. Look, they're yeah. going to do everything yeah, there except play AFL football. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Was the only thing they're football. not going to do is play the <laughs> AFL men's yeah. game. Uh, I don't think with the, with the, uh, best with the club going for. the way it's going at the moment, getting yeah. the wins on the board, I don't think it would be the smartest move to the fact yeah. 20,000 into somewhere where they'll put 80,000 well, getting like 35,000 against the interstate yeah. clubs and that so yeah so yeah. I think uh, yeah no look it'll, it'll be exciting once no, it's no, finished it's good. Yeah, good. but I think the best we can hope for for a men's game is a practice match before yeah, the season starts that's, that's, that's about it yeah. alright no alright Davey oh, 63 games 37 goals battle you were yeah. a, a real um, <laughs> you know a, a really a uh, really Important player in that in that era between 2008 we and so. 2015. We love you, we love you mate. Like that, yeah. We knew oh, we were oh, going to yeah. get 100% of the 46ers. Yeah. We always get the best. Yeah. So, <laughs> I don't know about that. No, no the best of 46ers. No, no, we were. always say that now you are a legend. Of the jumper punch. That's there right. Oh, you are so joining you know, a growing we're list. We're talking Robert Walls. We're talking a growing loser. list of greats. It's and you're uh, in that. You're name that me bracket. out a little bit. I think. I think it's, uh, <laughs> you're you're in so, that bracket too, mate. No, so. I'm uh, I'm forever grateful for the footy club. Thanks very you much are. for joining us. And thank you for joining yeah, us. No worries. Thanks for having us. Thank Thanks for coming over to God's country. Hundred uh, percent. Let's get the W tomorrow. And let's, let's uh, hope yeah. that Carlton wins tomorrow. Hey, yeah, 100%. 100%. go Blues. I guess.